am from St. Louis, Missouri. I, my organization is Acres. I'm the founder and executive director. I'm also a member of the National Black Food and Justice Alliance, um, one of the greatest organizations that has existed in this generation. Bam. Bam, That's like that. That's um, so I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, yeah, Ferguson. So talking about in relation to Ferguson, um, I'm sorry, pause. Blue right. Jersey. Okay. I, I love St. Louis. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> my city. <laughs> so in relation to Ferguson, um, I'm in the Nation of Islam. And so as a member of the Nation of Islam, the women weren't always allowed to be out there for safety reasons, right? Um, but what happened was that we had never seen a rebellion because let's let's call it for what it is it was a rebellion the people of st louis missouri north st louis uh county and north st louis city black people rebelled during ferguson mm -hmm. um because we have been under uh racist oppression for a very long time yeah. what happened was and and this is from people who were on the front lines because i can't say that i was always always on the front lines what happened was that opportunity happened we had never seen something like that and so when people essentially started being on the front lines pushing back and it's like we're not taking any more of this because of course uh mike brown jr was left out there for uh dead for a significant amount of time right. what happened was that it was something that was a natural grassroots thing and a response from people seeing that body laying out there what it turned into uh was essentially uh people coming to co-opt um mm. and it became a grift um mm. and this is from people very prominent activists that i know who have um been calling it out so like nayoto um Yuhuru is one of the people who does um media and mm. she she was first one seen it called it out of course we know darren seals called out the money that came in and the people getting the money um rest in pieces darren seals and so um we've seen that so the aftermath of ferguson right um was that white people in st louis is like basically y'all let y'all negroes get out of hand and we're paying for that to this day mm. right um and so what that looks like is um the steady decline of communities um, since that time, we've seen um, a prominent grocery store, uh, Shop and Save, uh, mm. close down. Mm. Um, and we've seen another prominent grocery store who the family lives in, in Missouri, Snooks, buy those grocery stores. And in all the black areas, they didn't open anything else up. So, which made North County, right? Which is um, North County turn into what everybody's considered a food desert but we know it's a food apartheid mm. because by even in that right buying of those shopping saves and not opening up anything else there strategic yeah. and so we started to see it um when i got into this work in 2018 um i know that a lot of people wasn't thinking food justice was a social justice issue yeah. we're in the midwest right and so one of the things I always tell people from the South, man, y'all have something that we don't always get to experience, and that's black spaces without white people. Um, and so that's a beautiful thing. And so, um, you know, people wasn't looking at food justice like a social justice issue, especially not no growing food, because this is a disconnect. You know, yeah. we came for several reasons up north, but we definitely came to get away from shirt cropping um, as a system. And so sometimes that, that a disconnect happened with families. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh one of the things that i would tell people food justice is the most important part of the revolution shirts are over there right. um so food justice is the most important part of the revolution because if we look at the civil rights movement if we look at all of our movements black panthers the nation of islam we look at these organizations food was a central tenant of it um fanny lou hamer she wasn't going to the capital to talk to them about politics she was going to the capital because of what was happening to sharecroppers um even when we talk about missouri the sharecropper strike in missouri um that was that political act of resistance of black farmers going along the roadsides in the boot hills of missouri um to bring awareness and attention that white farmers who owned the land would take the money and, and then put them off the land mm. um mm. and so like that is the history of our social justice movements. And so that's what I would tell people um, 
in St. Louis. Mm. Um, and so at the time in 2018, when I started to work, they were actually doing food system work. Mm. And I was like, yeah, um, ain't black enough for me. Mm. Um, right. Ain't radical right. enough for me. Right. And I don't believe in trying to shift the system is doing what it's supposed to do. Right. And so one of the biggest things that they were doing was like, we're going to end hunger. Mm-hmm. We know what people were saying that. Right. Um, and they were like, oh, we're going to go get farmers from rural Missouri. Got it. They were all right with farmers. Right. And so um, I was like, well, those black people growing in in the communities. Right. So you don't have to go all the, the way, way out yeah. mm-hmm. to go get them. But even if you did go out there, the USDA said there's about 300 some black farmers in Missouri. Right. So where are they at? Right. And so I went on, I took it upon myself to go and try to find these farmers. I found a lot of urban farmers. Right. Since then, I have found uh, Boo Hill farmers. But the trust, there's no trust, right? right? right. So like you, take, you think about farmers who are in the Boo Hill who literally still have ancestral land mm. they trying to keep it as much as possible and they're not too trusting of people coming in and making promises and right, stuff like right, that right, and so right, right. um you know one of the i worked for that organization there was some racism and then i got the opportunity to say uh that my funders were like we'll fund you to start your own food justice organization and mm. i was like what uh, okay. i was like oh yes and i thought they were playing yeah. because they lie yeah they right lie <laughs> and so right, a lot and so but they were serious and i was like oh snap the first thing i knew i had to do was connect with a national organization to mm-hmm. be my backbone because i knew if i would have only worked in st louis what happened is they would have blackballed me um which has in a part happened mm-hmm. um but that's when i was like i need to join the alliance Damn. and i because i don't know um an organization mm. that look, I don't know organization that that like in this time frame that exists that's for all black people, right? And I mean, when I say all black people, I mean all black people, right? Um, and so the decision to join the alliance was easy, um, of course, because being in a nation and a tra- uh, tradition of farming and owning land and mm. building businesses and things like that. Um, it was an easy one for me. Yeah. And so joining the nation um, literally changed the trajectory of food, not only food justice, but like food work in St. Louis and what it looks like. Mm. And so um, that came through a lot of black farmers getting resources, whether they financial resources, other resources, it catapulted people who um, wanted to be in food justice leadership in St. Louis because there wasn't, when I first started working in 2018, there was no leadership. Mm. It was nothing. It was just like, we're at this table um, and we're trying to play a white game. Mm. And I was like, I don't play white games. I play black games. I don't play games at all. But if mm. I'm going to do something and build something, we're going to build black. Yeah. Um, and so like now we see a whole lot of things shifting. Uh, one of the biggest things that I think that um, I learned, especially from um, the co-founder Dar, about um, working behind the scenes with philanthropy mm. um, and pushing that needle and being unapologetically black when I'm in the room um, and not not compromise. Man, not compromise. Let me tell you something, right? When you're in these position, one of the things that I had to stand on was not compromising on the basic humanity of our people. Right. right and so like because it a lot of times come when they want you to compromise and so um i'm in the room and i'm like no nah, we don't need y'all to do this for us we need y'all to step out the way and allow us to do it um and so like we got one of the biggest funders in st louis to commit to uh funding food justice for the next 20 years mm-hmm. which is big which mm-hmm. is because we're in the midwest right. and we're at a time where midwest farmers were suing the usda right yeah right so yeah. midwest farmers yeah. were yeah. suing the usda yeah. over yeah. the justice for, over not even the justice for black farmer act they were suing the usda over uh just the debt relief right and yeah. so here we are how this this you know and it wasn't just me singularly it was a, a lot of people pushing for that mm-hmm. in time in the organization and out and so now here we have one of the biggest organizations that it's like, all right, we're going to fund this for the next 20 years. Not food system work, but food justice, which makes it a difference, things like that. And so um, we're starting to see organizations shift. We're starting to see organizations start to listen to us. Um, and, you know, we're starting to see community come together and say what they want. Uh, I'm working on a community-owned grocery store from um, the Fairground neighborhood. Mm. One of... Um, 
and how that conversation came about, right, was that Snooks left again, mm -hmm. um, and they begged Snooks to come back. And so Snooks was like, no, nah, y'all still. And I was like, isn't that the, what right. The... So I was like, isn't mm -hmm. that the pot caught in the kettle black? Come on now. I was like, cause we didn't get here by happenstance, but right. I was like, okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, no, okay, <laughs> we still, well. I was like, I thought it was just reparations, <laughs> but you know, oh, yeah. um, and you got insurance on it, so stop playing. Stop. So the Snooks not only was a grocery store, it also had a pharmacy. So they left, and, and, the, and the head of the neighborhood association, older woman, she was like really trying to figure out how the neighborhood association actually worked on housing. Mm. And so I was like, as I'm sitting there, she's like, I don't know what to do. We're going to lose more residents. I was like, why won't the community open up their own grocery store? Yeah. It was, for me, it was that simple. Mm -hmm. um, but also, I'm a nation, so like, I understand that for them it was like, well, can that happen? And I was like, let me show you. Right. And we went uh, south of the city and this organization that originally the concept was started by black women coming from the south. Mm. And it was the whole model of let's buy wholesale and sell. Yeah. They eventually turned it into a grocery store since that area has been gentrified. Yeah. So it's like, let's, Do it that. exists, right? Mm -hmm. And so when I, pr when I presented it to, uh, the neighborhood association, the rest of the neighborhood association, there was a gentleman in there, and they was like, you're the only man here. Mm. And they said, what do you think? And he said, he looked at me and said, yeah, sound good, but is it gonna happen? Mm. Woo, it was like a gut punch. And I, right. so I was like, oh shit, right. right? And, but then I was like, this is the reality that we have when we have politicians and people, leadership who's been selected that stands in front of us um, and lie. And so, I didn't give him a response mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because there was nothing that I could say to him to convince him. Right, yeah, exactly. So I got into action. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I remember the first grant that I got, big grant that I got, um, like 50 grand, and, I'm, and I wrote the grant for that grocery store in mind to get us a consultant. Mm. Um, and then after the consultant, the Alliance uh, gave us funding for the kickoff event. And I remember the smile on their brother's face. Mm. I remember the smile on Miss Lily's face, mm. who had, who often says to me, you know, I tell the people, I might not be here to witness this, but this for your future. And I'm like, no, nah, we gonna see it in your lifetime yeah. and mine, right? And so to see that smile on their face, I was like, man, this is why I'm in this. This, this is the reason why, um, yeah. Bam. Yo, thank you so much, yo. You're crazy. <laughs> yo, I hear myself in your talking, man. Yo, damn. You know I got skinny time, man. <laughs> Listen. What's my name?